Hi and welcome. Uh, this video is going to demonstrate creating an elevation drawing uh, inside of the Visio interface within SI 2015. Uh, so to do that, go to Start, Projects, Manage Projects. Uh, here you'll see a list of your uh, projects. And um, if the Visio file already exists, uh, you'll see it listed down here in the bottom section of the screen. Or you can always you know, create a new uh, Visio drawing. Uh, the reason this is grayed out right now is you need to check the file out before you can work with it. That includes creating new ones or working on existing drawings. So click this to check out the file. Then uh, double click it and it will open uh, inside of Visio. And this is the Visio interface for SI2015. Uh, over here you can see a list of your products, uh, your shapes list, and of course the project editor. So go ahead and shrink this down a little bit in size here because we're going to be dragging over to this page. Um, although you can drag from here as well. It's, it's up to you on how you want to uh, populate your uh, project as well as the drawing pages. We are on an elevation view tab here. Uh, it's just one of the styles of pages that you can create inside of uh, SI2015. And the shapes that drop on this page are to scale. Uh, so they're based off of the not only the page scale, which you can get to by right clicking, going to uh, page setup and checking out what the drawing scale is. It's also based on the height, width, and depth dimensions for the products uh, in your SI2015 catalog. Now we'll go ahead and add a, a product or two. Uh, first things first, uh, choose your location where you want it to go. We'll say the Office AV system. And uh, you can pull out your product explorer here, do a search for what you're looking for. Uh, find the part, click on it, drag it over to the uh, elevation view page, and it will drop a scaled shape zoom in a little bit so you can see this and what you're seeing right here is uh, a very plain shape sometimes the shapes will drop with graphics on them uh, other times you'll just get this uh, if uh, a shape hasn't been assigned to a particular category or subcategory inside of the software uh, the shapes you can choose from for this page uh, are over here if you look in uh, shapes tab the elevation shape stencil you'll see a list of all of the available uh, scalable shapes inside of the software, the elevation shapes. Again, these are reading the dimensions on the product. So uh, if you want to change this look to any look over here, you certainly can. Um, in this case, let's try to make it look like this audio amplifier. Um, to do that, just right click on the shape and go to Details, Shape, Change Shape. This will pull up um, a copy, essentially, of this list of um, stencils over here. Find the uh, shape that you want this to look like and select it. And uh, what you can see down here are your options for saving uh, this as the default shape, either specifically for the product, the category and subcategory, or the entire category when dropping on an elevation page. So it's up to you if you want to set any of those. I'll just change it for this project here. And you can see that now this has a different uh, look to it. Now if you uh, double click the shape here, it will open the specs for this particular product. And um, if you go to the specifications tab, you'll see here that we do have the height, width, and depth fields. And in this case, uh, the software is reading the height and width and then scaling uh, this shape appropriately. So uh, you know, just as an example, if you change this width, say to 30, and save this, you can see that the shape automatically stretches for you. So I'll go ahead and change that back real quickly. And actually, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter than 19 inches this time. Uh, for an example, I'm going to put it at you know, 17 inches and hit save. So the shape scales. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about the properties of the shape. So you can right click to get to a lot of uh, properties, like showing text blocks or not. If you turn on text blocks, you'll get right here, as you can see in the middle, with a little handle. Uh, information, just like a lot of our other shapes have, the manufacturer, the model, and the component ID. Uh, then once you're showing this, you can choose whether to merge them or not, snap them, very similar to, again, other shapes within our software. Um, you could hide the model if you'd like, so if you don't want to show that here. Um, you can change your mount type, the color of the faceplate, um, and then in this case, uh, pattern type. But uh, to get, again, as always, full um, use of all of the properties of the shape, you're going to want to have the shape data window. Uh, showing in Visio. Um, if you don't have that uh, turned on, you'll want to do that up here under your view menu. Then go to task panes and choose shape data. But you can see over here you have um, 
all of the right click options plus some. Now let's take a look at uh, say one of these properties here, like the mount type. And this is the reason I shortened this device a second ago. Uh, right now it's marked as a shelf mounted device. So uh, you can see over here it's showing uh, displaying feet um, under it. And you can see that there are other properties for the feet like the percentage uh, height. You can shrink them down um, to get a more accurate representation of whatever product you're putting in here. Uh, because obviously this shape is not this exact product. It's a representation of in this case an audio amplifier. So if you change the mount type here uh, to rack mounted, watch what happens. You'll see the uh, that rack ears are automatically added to the uh, shape. And this is so that it will snap nicely to uh, our rack elevation shape, which we'll bring over here in a second. Um, now, if it is 19 inches wide, you won't see these uh, rack ears. So uh, what I'll do is I'll double click this device, go to specifications, and we'll just correct that. We'll make sure that it's 19 inches wide. Uh, now, if you always rack mount a particular device, you can mark it as rack mounted here, and then it will automatically drop um, with those rack ears uh, as a default on the shape. So if you want to do that, you can. Or if it's a mix between shelf and rack, you may not check this if you don't want to. But just hit save and close. And uh, now you can see the rack ears were removed. Uh, now this is 19 inches wide, but there are little screw shapes on that. So that's to represent it again going into a rack. Let me turn off this text block here. And we'll pull in a um, rack now to the page. So I'm going to do a quick search for racks here. And this time I'm going to pull it in directly uh, from the equipment list over here. You can double check the uh, location and system here in the drop zone and uh, select a product, drag it over, drop it. And what you're going to see here is a representation of a rack that you can now take a device like this. Let me zoom in a little for you. And when you pull this over here, you'll see that uh, it attaches every 1.75 inches or every uh, rack unit and that will snap into place to uh, give you a representation of a uh, system rack. And um, the depth field does come into play if you want it to. Um, by default, it's a front-facing elevation, but uh, you have the ability to create a side view of any product you'd like. And uh, in this case, we'll select both of these devices by holding control down on the keyboard, clicking on them. We're going to right-click, go to Details, Shape, Generate Side View. And you'll see that it generates a side view based on the uh, depth of the product. Now, um, unlike when you're dragging in uh, shapes or, or products from here or from the project editor, creating a side view is not going to double up the products, of course. It's, it's not adding to the job. If you go look at the project editor, uh, there's the amplifier, there's the rack, uh, only one time. And uh, if you want to take these, you can move them and line them up even better, but just put that here to the side. Again, if you have the depth dimensions, um, that's what you're going to get. And uh, besides the elevation shapes that you see here, there are a few other shapes that we've built that were intended uh, to be used on this page. Um, here in the cabinet tool stencil, there's a lot of um, cabinet pieces like tops, bottoms. Um, there's a floor shape if you'd like to show that sometimes for um, even side views of theater elevations. Um, mantel post crown molding uh, I'll, we're going to go through uh, cabinet tools in another video um, and you'll see them in the examples i'm about to show here's an example of a finished uh, elevation drawing you can see um, the cabinet tools were used here for uh, the furniture um, or cabinetry and uh, down here we have you know shapes from uh, the system integrator software in this case, a screen. Here's a, uh, let's double click this. It's a speaker. It will open up the specs on that. And again, everything's to scale on this page. And uh, over here, you can see um, there's even uh, a measurement for rack units showing what's going on in this rack. 